Morning, morning. Abari from UG. <laughs> Good morning, people. Just wanted to give a little shout out. Huh? Just tell you what, what, what we got going on today. <clears throat> So we're ordering some uh we're ordering some bricks, ordering some cement and some sand, yeah. Because our next development is going to be a tank, a stand for the water tank. You know? So right now we've just been dealing with it like when it cuts off, it cuts off. Because we can't store any water. So that's gonna be the next development, a water tank. So we're gonna make it. I'm going to show you guys the cost, the time and the cost, cost of materials, cost of labor, and the time it took to, to build it. So I hope you guys, you know, I hope, you, I hope that that can give some assistance to someone out there. Maybe they're doing the same thing. So yeah, we're going to do that. So we're just waiting on the delivery now. Not so many bricks, not so much sand, you know, half a truck of bricks. A, uh, some some plaster sand, sorry, some lake sand, and yeah. So we're gonna build a stand over there, towards this side of the house. Yeah, cause right now, boy, it's a rough. It's the village life is rough for real. I underestimated this thing. <laughs> it's a lot of hard work, you know. So right now, the water is off. Luckily, we stored loads of water, you know, what we could in the house. So it's like the water comes on every day to allow to allow everyone to fill up their tank. Because we don't have a tank, you know, when it cuts, it just cuts. So we're having to do bare little hood showers and sh stuff like that. You know, and, you know, I'm not really on that. And if I'm looking rough, you must know we got one... One little mirror in this place. One little pocket mirror. So your boy ain't been able to, to trim up, to do nothing. I can hardly even see myself. So you know, bear with me. Don't 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 grill a brother. <laughs> don't go too ham on me. You know what I'm saying? But we're out here, we're out here putting in the work, doing what we gotta do. You know? To develop this fuck this plot of land here, you know? It's been a long journey. A lot of work, a lot of sacrifices to get it to this stage, you know? And your boy ain't no old man. I ain't no pop belly old man. I'm old, but I ain't old. <laughs> you understand? So, boom. We're getting there, you know? You guys are going to see the progress. You guys are going to see the next stage, you know, of infrastructure that we put down over here. And just to let you guys know, all the services, electric, electric and water, we bought here. You know, it's about 300, 350 meters away. So we have to buy trees, pipe. So we're the only one on this line, this this water. So the pressure is very good. When it's on, it's good. You know, if I could run this tap for you right now, it's, it's, it comes out so fast. I think that's because we're the only one on the line. So it's just one line. You know, okay. So here goes the, the truck is here. The truck is here. Okay, guys. <clears throat> so, we just had our first drop off of plaster sand for the uh, water tank that we're going to build. So, this is the plaster sand. This is just one elf, one truckload. Yeah? One truckload. We have our cement. I think we did get six bags of cement. I'll be dropping the prices next to all of these things. You know, I'm going to show you the cement real quick. So we're just waiting on our, our bricks. So we're doing half a truck of bricks. That's like 500 clay bricks on average. Yeah. So we have our cement. Anytime we get cement, you should put it on a pallet. Yeah. Don't stack no more than eight on top of each other. Yeah? So what do you have? So we've got six there, yeah? And we go for Simba. You know, we started with Tororo. They said that was the best over here. But, you know, a lot of people just use what 
what their forefathers used or whatever. But after doing some research, Simba is actually better. And at the time, it was actually cheaper when we was building than Tororo. Or the same price. But, you know, we switched over to Simba and the results, you know, the results are very good. So all our blocks and that we made with Simba. <clears throat> and guys, uh, anybody that is in the, in the field of building or they want to go and do a self-build, they want to go build, there's a book, even a book or two books, I'm going to put up on the screen. It's very, very good. It's very, very, uh. It's very, very, uh, what's the word, it's valuable, you know, it can, it can be used as a reference guide, it can break down everything, it's not, it's not as complicated as people may think, you know, how to quantity survey, you know, how to add up how many blocks you're going to need, so these are things that I would advise, anyone that's coming to Africa, or any other country outside the West, I would advise you to be on your game, so you must know as much as you can about every job you understand so if we're plastering it's down to you to know the ratio you understand if you're making blocks once again it's down to you to know your ratio you understand they know but you best know you know to know your method you know two coats quarter inch another half inch you know it's, it's down to you to know everything that's what i would advise you know because the guys out here, they're very efficient. They, they, they're very efficient, you know. They, they're very flipping, like, versatile. They know how to get things done. But there is a lack of discipline when it comes to building, you know. There's a, it's, it's a lack of discipline. So that's where you are going to have to come in. You're going to have to enforce your, your standards, you know, and make sure you get what you want. Because once you pay for the bricks, the blocks, the cement... It's the same, like, you spent the same money, so why would you want to get, uh, you know, a substandard result, you know, because it, it can be achieved with the same labor, the same sweat, it's the same, so it's just the discipline which is lacking, so you will have to be on top to say, hey, uh -uh, we want to do it like this, you understand? <clears throat> and another thing, piece of advice I would give, I would say, try to just stick to the building regulations you understand as much as possible obviously some things is not going to it may, it may be different because of the environment what 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 but most things is the same it's universal you understand so when we're talking about mortar ratios block ratios you know just how to do things just stick to as much as you can to the t of the building regulations the more you stick to the t the less problems you can get and the easier it will be to identify where something went wrong. You understand? So when you just follow the T, you know, the building regulations, it's universal. It's the same worldwide. If you do, if something doesn't add up, it's easier to go back and identify. Hey, how come this? Did we cure it? Did we do this? You understand? So, yeah, that's, that's, that's the advice I will give anyone that's trying to come to Africa and do a self-build. Another bit of advice I would give, <clears throat> I would say, you can go, you can go and get tenders. So you can go and get uh, quotes to build, yeah, which is a good thing, because in every quote you're gonna use the data. So you're gonna, you're gonna have a whole lot that you can add up for yourself, but there's gonna be some little parts and pieces that you're gonna extract. So every quote you extract the data. <laughs> You understand? But me personally, I give them the tender. You understand? I, I say, I need 13 guys. Yeah? Masons, we're paying this. Laborers, we're paying this. Yeah? And I know how much blocks we should get laid every day with that amount of people. You understand? So in this book, which I'm going to show you guys, it will show you, you know, what a two, two bricky and a two, two bricklayers and a laborer in the West... It will show you what is expected to lay every day. You understand? So if we're dealing with bricks, yeah? A two brick layers and one labor, laborer. They should lay minimum a thousand bricks a day. Just out of that two and one team. You understand? Now if we're talking about blocks, you change that to 400 to 500 per day. 
That's two bricklayers, one laborer. Yeah? So imagine on this house, what do we have? We had one, two, three, four. We had six bricklayers. One on each corner. Yeah? One on each corner, two in the middle, right? Each 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 bricklayer, they had their own laborer. Yeah? Yeah? So each laborer even has their own wheelbarrow. So there's no excuse. The bricklayers, the masons, they don't have to move. You understand? So that's how we did it. You understand? So every mason has their own laborer. Every laborer has their own wheelbarrow. So we ended up having like uh she we had about because we needed laborers to backfill, to move materials, to this. So everyone had their own laborer. That's six. And then we had like an extra, maybe like extra three, four. You know, when it came to backfilling, we hired because we didn't want to stop the work. So we had to just hire more people to come backfill, you know, because this is a big, big house. So we, we forgot that we need to buy Marum. So that's why we dug up a, a, a part of this compound just to help with the expenses because it was a whole lot. And that's something you must remember when you're doing this foundation. Yeah, if you go deep and you have a big house. All of that needs to get backfilled. You understand? So that's how we did it. And so we had six masons, six laborers. Yeah? We had a head mason, an engineer. We had two engineers. Yeah? Elder. We made sure we got some elderly, you know, the elders, they got the more experience. Yeah? And this house here, as you see it, we got it to roof level. Roof level, roof plate level, yeah? In 16 days, from from nothing, from position in the house with string and an engineer square, shit like that, from nothing. We got this house to, to, to roof level in 16 days, right? Now, in the calculations, it was even like uh, 11, 11, 12. But we gave some extra time, rain, what, 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 what? 16 days. So don't let no one tell you. It's all mathematics. You understand? Don't let no one tell you, oh, we're building a house and they're building it for fucking, you know, for, for ages and ages and ages. It don't make sense. The only way this should take a, a, a long time is if you have like two guys working it. So if you have two guys working it and you say, hey, this is your Saturday job, your Sunday job. Just know, say it's okay, it's in your own time. Six months, it can be done. You understand? So even the foundation, the foundation was about four days. You understand? Four, five days, something like that, five days. And then we just kept rolling. The, the roof took two weeks. Yeah, it's a lot of wood. Don't underestimate what this roof takes. It's a whole lot of wood. And then you need to buy the roof sheets. <laughs> You understand because this house is quite big yeah so it's, it's I, under, I underestimated exactly what it would be yeah so yeah the roof took two weeks what else what else the plastering we plastered this because we haven't plastered that this took another what did this take we plastered this inside and outside because we done it in two coats a lot of times they want to do it in one coat if I was you, I wouldn't do that. You understand? A lot of time, the way the, the way the system is here, it's like the quicker they get done, the quicker they get paid. So it's all it's all it's all against, you know, what you're trying to do as a, as a builder. So you must be aware of that and say, hey, I don't care about the time. We're gonna do it right. So we're gonna plaster one coat, yeah, three quarter inch. Leave it for four days come back to it so when we left it for four days they went inside and plastered yeah and then while we leave that inside to cure they came outside and did the finishing coat now if it was up to them they would have just done it one coat you understand because that's how they do things over here they just do it one coat but you know you can get up end up with with uh some problems doing that kind of stuff so as 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 the owner of the house or the build, whoever's out here trying to build, it's down to you to enforce these things, to make sure you do the things to the T. That's why I say, every stage, just make sure you do some research. So if you're on plastering, you find out what plastering takes. You understand? 
don't don't rely on nobody else just to come because these guys they call themselves plasterers builders engineers all kind of stuff and then you you have to say why are we doing this this don't make no sense you understand so yeah that's that's what that's what i can say to you guys you know uh what else what else planning you know planning planning you know you don't want builders here with nothing to do because they want to get paid you understand so if you're getting bricks and we need bricks for tomorrow's work make sure you get them today you understand even even get like a few days worth at one time you understand so it's here accessibility that's another thing wherever you plan to build if it's not accessible yeah because like us we, we couldn't bring a big sino truck down here with 30 tons of sand you understand they wouldn't come down here so every so we're losing out like two three hundred pound on our sand because we we have to we have to get small trucks in small trucks in but if we could have just got the wholesale sand sino truck we would have saved a lot of money you understand sino of fuck sino of plaster sino of lake sand done deal but we, we can't bring that down here because they're scared they can't get out the road isn't too great so even if you're buying land i would say look think about everything if it's inaccessible it's gonna cost you because you're gonna have to pay all them smaller trips of sand which we had to do every day you know and these guys were loving it they were loving it <laughs> even to move sand you know we got a guy he was hanging around you know every trip <laughs> He just getting paid just to take it from up the road to here because we had a big truck dump the sand up the road because he couldn't come down here because he, he was scared he wouldn't be able to get out so you know accessibility is a, is, a, is a serious thing you know and it'll cost you so if you don't think about these things before it will cost you <clears throat> you know what else what else what else what else yeah just heavy planning guys you know and if you have someone on the ground, you know, as your as your, as your buffer, as your in between, that's also a good idea, you know. That's also a good idea because you just relay everything you want, everything you run the game through them, and then boom, you know, maybe it's a language barrier, maybe it's a what what, but just make sure you got that relation to where they are listening to what you want. You understand? And be very detailed with what you want and what you don't want from the start. So in this house, this foundation, that's a ring beam. You're looking at a ring beam right there. This is T16s. T16s. T16s running all over there. So we have two ring beams in the foundation. The foundation is very deep. You understand? So we have another one below the ground. Another ring beam. So, you know, we, we was all about making this thing solid we want this house to be around you know for 100 years from now so we've got two ring beams in the foundation as you can see these are all t16s t16s and t12s yeah at the time they were like uh at the time i think they were like 64,000 or 68,000 shillings per 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 iron rod now the rods are 12 foot i believe 12 foot that's that's how they come i believe it's 12 foot 12 foot or 12 meters something like that you know it's been a while but they were 64 at the time i don't know what they are now everything seems to have gone up yeah so we've got a ring beam you know just below the roof plate also same thing t16s in all of these pillars four t16s four 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 you understand so steel is another thing you know to think about and also if you a lot of people they say they want to build up they want to build up building up is good yeah but just make sure you have the finances for it because every time you go up that's a slab you understand that's a slab that's concrete that's steel and you know what it is you would so to, to build this house we don't use metal scaffoldings so all these holes they are wood we we have to buy a hell of a lot of wood for the guys to build because they got to they got to build the scaffolding so they can go up you understand so that's another cost <laughs> just wood for scaffolding yeah so every time you go up say you want to build a mansion what 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 
you have to know what you're doing because the cost is going to go up. Alright guys.